Team, what is up? What is up? What is up? What is up? This is Danny. Welcome back to the channel. Guys, I, I, I think I'm somewhere. I don't really know where I'm at in the 30 day prospecting. This is video like eight or nine. But if you're getting some value out of this, like 100% like and share and subscribe. Like there's literally a free 30 day course. Like most people, I promise you are not delivering 30 day free courses on their YouTube to show people actually how to get better at prospecting. And I'm doing this number one because I want to provide value. Number two, because it's a challenge for myself that I want to teach people how to actually get better inside of prospecting. But number three, at the end of the day, this forces the world to up their game. And the reason it forces the world to up their game is because if you have more people that actually go out into the market and know how to sell, collectively, we're actually going to start seeing less objections because the people that are actually answering the phones are going to understand more people know what they're talking about. The more BS sales calls that they get, the more BS that they're able to give back and actually get away with, right? Like when somebody's like, I'm in a meeting and somebody's like, all right, cool, I'll call back in an hour. Like people need to understand we're going to go harder than that. Like you can't let somebody off the hook that easy with something like that. Like I don't want people to actually lose out a business deal because somebody's in an imaginary meeting that wasn't really happening because they're sitting by a water cooler or pouring a cup of coffee, right? Like I don't want something to happen like that. Like this is an opportunity for you to present your product or for service to somebody inside a business, right? This is an opportunity for you to actually understand that you're providing value to an individual inside a business so that your product or for a service can actually do a benefit to them. If you're doing a benefit to them and you're sure that you're doing a benefit to them, then you owe it to not only them, but yourself to actually deliver that conversation, right? There's so many things about that are out there about, you know, purpose to serve, need to serve, things like that. But like, if you truly believe that your business actually has a value and you can plug somebody inside of your business, they can actually make money inside of your organization. Like there's no reason in the world why you shouldn't actually push to have that conversation with the person. Right. So now that we've kind of had this like mindset refresher, we've gone through some of the cadences and everything like that. I want to run through tonality, right? And tonality is really important. And I want to, I want to kind of rip a little bit of a story here. Like I've been doing a lot of you know, cold call training when it comes to setters. Like there are some people that I've been having like real life feedback sessions with. And I think it was important. And I said it in the last video too. Like it's really important to make sure that I understand what the market is looking for. Right. At the end of the day, the market always wins. Right. There's a perfect example of how the market wins. I had a post like this magical post that I wrote for my Twitter at sales anywhere. And I thought it was going to rip. Like I thought it was one of the greatest things I've ever written. I put it in my pinned tweets. I was like, when people come to my page, they're going to see this thing. It's got a beautiful headline. They're going to immediately go to it. Right. That's what I thought. Sure enough, there was a post I had written two weeks ago that not only doubled or tripled, but actually quadrupled the amount of engagement that this one pin tweet had. So what did I do? I was like, the market has spoken. Like, it doesn't matter how I feel. It's not about how emotional I am. It's not how I think I'm smarter than the market because at the end of the day, nobody's smarter than the market. You know why you're not smarter than the market? Because you're one person. One person will never win against people. That's just the way it goes, right? So I switched, right? And I wound up grabbing like an extra like 500 or 1,000 subs you know, just from switching that. I don't know if, you know, that was all it was, but like I had huge, crazy, wild engagement from this one post. So I was like, let's pin it. Like, who cares, right? But getting back into this, I, I do want to provide a lot of value because I think it's really important to get people to understand what it's like to prospect because this is going to be the thing that gets most people out of business, right? Like a lot of people are like cold email this, cold email that. Like sooner or later, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter like what cold channel that you're approaching, Sooner or later, you're going to want to get them on a call, right? You're going to have to have a human discussion with them, and you should have the ability to actually have a one-on-one -on -one connection. And prospecting is the most extreme version of that connection, which basically means that if you can prospect somebody in a cold market, you can 1,000% run a discovery call, which means you can also 1,000% provide a close, right? This is the hardest one to do, and because it's the hardest one to do, it's the one I chose to teach. It's the one I chose to teach because if you can do this one, you can do anyone, right? So now let's get into tonality. So a lot of the things that I've been seeing inside of like the trainings that I've been doing is that everybody is in a rush to, to just like, there's always an expectation, right? And you kind of fool yourself in frame, right? So when you're calling on people, right? There was a big thing on Thomas Gannett when he first came out and he like right before he launched his 300 agencies, when he dropped like one of his, like, I think it was like his fourth or fifth video. And he was like, hey, just to let you know, this is a cold call. Do you want to hang up now or give me 30 seconds? I have something to offer your business, right? What a lot of people do, right, and what he did actually that's better than some is that he went on his own timeline, right? Like he ran his tonality the right way because his tone didn't change. What happens is the second you get somebody to agree to a 30-second time frame, what winds up happening is that you're going to talk faster because you're actually thinking that you have a 30-second time limit. Here's the thing, right? If you're speaking to a cold prospect, right, and you've given yourself a 30-second time limit in order to have a discussion about whatever your product offer or service is, right? If you say something inside of that 30 seconds that actually sparks some attention, right? If you say something that trips a pain point, draws a hook, or gets them involved in the conversation, how important do you think that 30 seconds was to them in the first place, right? Would they not want to give you an extra minute? Like, you can even, like, tout it and be like, hey, I know that I only asked for 30 seconds. You know, we're about a minute and a half in. Am I cool to continue? Like, you can literally be that cocky and confident and go that route. Like, you can get a laugh out of it. 
But at the end of the day, like you have to understand your tonality because the second you ask for a time frame, like, hey, do you have 45 seconds so I can have a quick conversation with you, right? They're like, sure, go ahead. That doesn't mean pull the yoke on the chainsaw and just like let the words start flying, right? Give them a brief description of what you do, who you help, some of the pain points of the individuals that are in similar industries. I promise you, if somebody's inside of an industry and there's a pain point that you're going after and you study that industry to the point where you understand that, that pain point is maybe not universal, but it's enough of an aggravation that somebody's going to want to sort this out eventually if they're at the right phase of their business, go slower on that part. Because think about like stabbing, right? Like everybody's seen the screen movie, so don't, don't make this weird. Right. But like there's a difference between like the, the quick, you know, jabs and then the in twist pull. Right. I promise you, like you really want to exploit some pain. The reason you want to exploit some pain is because that pain is going to be the thing that keeps a conversation in motion. Right. If I'm not in pain and you're not sparking some of the, the dopamine up here that this individual that I'm having a conversation with provides a fix for some of the things that I'm severely lacking in then they're not going to want to have a conversation with you. But the second that you give yourself a timeline, it does not mean that you start motorboating. You just do not go crazy, right? And a lot of people do speak about this, right? Like when they're they're worked up, their adrenaline's running, like they're dopamine, you're talking to a stranger, like you're expecting some kind of objection that if you don't go fast enough, they're not going to want to listen to you. In truth, if you don't say the right thing, they're not going to want to listen to you. And that's what a lot of people forget. And it forces you to stumble and you pull in a lot of filler words. Um, mm -mm. It almost looks like you're reading where to go on your script. And nobody wants that, right? Nobody wants to be sold in a cheap way, right? If you're going to be sold, and I said this before, you want to be sold by somebody likable. You want to be sold by somebody that has authority. You want, to, you want to be sold by someone that you have trust in, right? If I'm getting sold for a secondary conversation by somebody that I'm well aware is reading a script, like me personally, I don't want to be sold by, by the low-class seller. Like I want to be sold by the top-class seller. So I actually put enough cadence into their business to understand that they are delivering something to me. They're interrupting my day. They're giving me some value, but I'm going to continue that conversation with them. This is why tonality is super important. Control what you can control. High pitches into low pitches. Like, yeah, there's a lot of companies in the industry that have very specific pain point, right? You say it slower, draw it out, because that's the stuff that matters, right? Be a human, right? When they provide objections, right? Laugh, elevate your voice. I'm running into a meeting right now. Hey, that's no problem. I fully expected I called you out of the blue. I totally understand if I'm getting in front of your day. However, right? Like that's just something that you do inside of those instances, right? It's some of the things that you do that make sense to actually draw back and go forward and manipulate your tone as you're going into the conversation. The reason that you want to do this is because that's what makes you more human. People don't want to speak to machines. That's why as, as much as Chad GBT and all these other things are going to kill it, right? Human empathy at the end of the day is going to be the thing that ultimately wins. Because if I've exposed enough of your pain for you to trust me and I'm empathetic towards whatever your need is, then you're going to believe that I have a resolution for whatever pain point it is inside of your business, right? You have to master tonality, right? Which means you have to understand the cadences of your words, where they have the most impact, slow it down when they have impact, speed it up when it doesn't, because it's it's a road, right? You want to fly through the point, slow down at the point you're trying to make, speed back up through some of the cadences, slow down as you're trying to get to the point that you're trying to make, right? And you have a healthy mix of this, highs and lows, it makes it more personal. When you speak lower, it sounds like you're telling them something that's extra important, right? Like we used to have a trick that we used to do inside of sales, right? Like when the manager was like around or somewhere else in the, in the background when I was doing face-to-face -face sales, I'd be like, listen, manager said that we could do something for you today so I, I wanted to offer you this right it sounds bad like i could have just been like hey the manager said we have this promo today so you see how it changes the dynamic of, of what we do and how we do it but at the end of the day the tonality is going to be the thing that gets you the humanity factor inside of your conversation so own it master it and utilize that in your conversation